Welcome, welcome. About to get started here. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to attend. What's up, Diego? How you doing, man? Diego, uh, did you uh, just real quick before we get started? Uh, you can you can chat. Try putting something in the chat box and see if, if that's working fine. But I have I have to ask you, like, uh, since we've started. Let me see. Since we've started, uh, have you have you noticed like any change with with the way you've been thinking? Uh, any 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 uh, transformations that you can uh, identify? Some some great things that that might have happened from you out of this four week uh, this four week training we did. And I have a lot of notes here. I'm just curious to I'm just I'm just curious to know like if this if this information has been helpful. And and if it has, just give me a thumbs up. And if you have any if you have any questions during this uh this webinar. You've been more aware. That's that's good. That's good. And, and that that's what that's where it starts because now uh, you, you're starting to 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 start to realize stuff around you, and you're starting to be more uh, aware of, of what actions you're taking that are because everything's a cause and effect, man. Everything is a cause and effect. So every action has an effect, and the, and the more we're aware of those actions, the the more we we can predict the effects of those actions. And so uh, in this webinar, in this last webinar, so what we're gonna do is this is, a, it's a four week continuing. So I'm gonna have it uh, next next Wednesday, we're gonna have another one at four, at 5.30. And basically I'm gonna start from, from the top again, uh, controls, uh, triggers, uh, doubles, and then we'll, we'll end again with, uh, with the full circle. And, uh, and if anybody's new to this, basically what it is, every, every week we cover a, a new uh, topic and we go into deep with we go in deeper with that, and I share uh, some different philosophies, some different tools, tips, and the, the people that that actually signed up, uh, I actually send them the assessments, and then I also give them uh, tips on different books. Diego Diego picked up one of the books, and um, after he takes that assessment test, he's going to see how beneficial it was for for him. But uh, this webinar, this last webinar that we're doing this week, is uh, the full circle, and uh, my, my intention, my intention with these webinars is to really get you to commit and sign up because once you sign up, then you have someone holding you accountable to make sure that you're, that you're, you're growing because just like, uh, if, if I was like a fitness trainer, right. And I'm telling you, Hey, you know what, like, here's a workout plan and here you go. I, I just give you the workout plan. But if I don't check, if I don't check up to see if you're doing the workout, like nothing's going to change. So it's always good to have someone holding you accountable, especially if you're wanting to grow, because look, whenever our, our minds sense any kind of change, we get real defensive. Like we go into like a, like a, it's either fight, flight, or we freeze. And so whenever our, our, our minds uh, sense something that's not normal, then we start to go into like this fear kind of mindset, right? And for example, if you're used to like, getting out of work. I have some friends that like, they're, they're used to getting out of work, going home, uh, drinking some beer and this watching TV. And when I, when, when we started to introduce, like for them to study or them to go for walks to kind of get their mind thinking at first their, their body was rejecting it. They're like, dude, like, I don't, I don't feel like going dude. Every, like, I, I don't, I don't see the purpose in it. So their mind was like telling them, telling them to not do it. And so I was like, dude, like, just do it. Just keep going. And eventually you'll, you're going to retrain your mind and you're going to retrain your habits. And, and, and most of them stop drinking. They're like, dude, I, I, I don't even want to drink anymore after work. I want to go walk and I want to process my thoughts. And so now that's normal to them. And so now it's the opposite because if, if they were to, they were, if they were to be invited to go have a, a beer or something, 
they're gonna be like, nah, dude, like I, I don't, I, I don't want to do that, you know. So it's 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 interesting how it works, but it's better when you have someone holding you accountable. So this is a little bit about my my backstory, and I have a lot of notes here, man. I wanna I wanna make sure I get as much as I can into this. This is gonna be a, like a longer video, and well, I'm gonna get started here because I, I don't have that much time. I think we can we could probably be done by like six. Uh, I'll say six fifteen. I'll try not to go past that. But a, li a little bit about my, my, my story is uh, I dropped out in ninth grade with twin boys and uh, I didn't have no education. I got into the auto body industry and I thought that's where I, I, I was supposed to be. Like I thought I was supposed to be a, a technician for the rest of my life. And uh, I didn't have any like business skills. I didn't, I, I didn't know how to read till I was like 28, 29, I think somewhere on there. And, uh, but whenever I got introduced to like mindset and setting goals and like the whole business, like it really got me really interested and it almost like reignited some kind of flame in me to kind of pursue business more. And, uh, over, over the, over the course of, and it's been like maybe 15 years now, uh, of personal growth, uh, different coaches, uh, retraining my habits, countless hours of studying, uh, multiple certificates in, in all kinds of negotiation, uh, financial management. Uh, I mean, what else? Uh, uh, dis, uh, uh, disruptive, dis, disruptive strategies. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's in the marketing, uh, goal setting. I've had some of the best coaches, man. Uh, so that's kind of like my story. But I've had the opportunity to working with some of like the, the most amazing people, man. Like, uh, I work with Tim story. I've worked with Brian Tracy, coach Burt. Uh, one of my, some people that are truly close to me is Michael coffee, Kay Wakeman, uh, T Bowman, uh, Rafael Vargas out of Florida, Elena Cardone, Sophia Castro. Uh, I mean, endless. I mean, I've worked with like so many different people and I've been able to like get into their mindset. I've been able to, to pick their brain and ask them like how they, they've been able to, to accomplish big things. And uh, I've, been, I've been really blessed to have them share those, those things with me, share those secrets with me, share those tips with me. And I've been able to build some close relationships so where I can, if I needed something, I can just reach out to them and they can help me out. So my goal with this is really to, to share what I've learned and share my experience and share, mostly share my failures uh, to, to other technicians or other business owners or other entrepreneurs that want to take it to the next level and want to better themselves and their family. So th this, this webinar is uh, the title of the concept is the, the, is the circle, the power of the circle, right? So what is the power of the circle? And I'm going to try to do something here. I'm going to try, I'm going to try to share my screen. If everything sounds good, Diego, can you, can you give me like a thumbs up? Also to Diego, if you can try, uh, you see where it says, uh, raise hand. Okay. Ra raise hand and see, see what it is. Okay. If like, so if you go back, it says lower hand. Okay. If you have any questions, I mean, hey, let, let's, let's get into it, man. I can probably even unmute you. If you want to go live, I can allow you to talk. Let me see how real quick. Hey, Diego, you there? I'm not, I'm not going to put you on. I just want to see if you're able to talk. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you on this. Okay. I should, I should be able to do it. Okay. If I have to put my headphones on, I'll put them on. So that, that, that's just an option. If you, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to, if you don't want to type, if you want to answer questions, just raise your hand. Okay. Okay, brother. Yeah. That'll work. Okay. I got you. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to mute you. Now. Okay. Perfect. So we know that's working. Let me see. Okay. Let's see if I can get back this. Okay. There it is. Okay. So I got it. Okay. So the power of the circle, let me see if I can share my screen here. Share screen. Let's see.
desktop. How do we share this? Uh, let me see something. Okay, I know what to do. Hold on. Give me one second. Okay. Let's see this going to work. Okay, I'm going to have to go back to this. Sorry about that. Okay, so, so the power of the circle, there's seven areas. And, and I'm going to share my screen here shortly, but there's seven areas. Are there seven? There's seven things that, that, that comes to, to um, the full circle. And when I refer to, to the circle, uh, you probably heard what people say, um, a balanced life, right? So if you're not aware of the, of the full circle, you always, you always associate balance with this life, like uh, your, your life and work. Like they always say family and work, right? They always say, uh, how do you balance family and work? Well, that's only two parts of, 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 the, of the circle. Let me share my screen again. I'm going to share this. I'll get it. Okay, there it is. I'm going to bring this up. Okay, okay let's go. Okay, perfect. Okay. Let's see. Okay, now I'm back up. Okay, perfect. Can you see it, Diego? Give me a thumbs up if you can see it. You should be able to see it. So th this is this is going to be the the complete seven areas of of, of our life, and uh, I actually got th this this page right here from the the one thing, uh, the book, the one thing. I, I highly encourage you to, to check out that book, the one thing. And so what we're doing here is uh, I'm introducing you to the to these seven areas, and so these seven areas, man, that. They, once you once you you start to tap in to these seven areas let me see if it's not if it's not going Let me try it again. Damn it. Let's see if this will go. Can you see it now? Can you see it now? Oh, perfect. All right, perfect. So you can see it clear? All right, perfect, man. So look. This is the seven areas. And so whenever, whenever this, this is, this is like some good stuff right here. Whenever people say, I want to have a balanced life. Whenever, whenever people say, I want to have a balanced life. They always, they always focus on. 
they always focus on like your, your this one, the job. They always focus on that one. And they always focus on maybe relationships. Let me move this out of the way. They, they, they focus on maybe like relationships. That's like family, right? They, they usually focus on this one. They usually focus on the job or they, and, and they focus on family. They'll say, okay, how do I balance life, like family and work, right? So they only focus on these two areas. And so look, there's all these seven areas that, that, that need to be paid attention to. So what you can do is you can say, hey, you know what? Where am I at in my spiritual life? Where am I at in my, in my physical life, my personal life, relationships? How am I with my job, my business, my finances? Like these areas all need to, you all need to pay attention to these, all, all these areas. And so let's, let's go through these areas. Let's go through these areas, okay? I have some notes here. So we'll start with spiritual life, okay? We'll start with spiritual life. What is it? What is spiritual life? And so spiritual life is really like, like learning to let go of the past. Like a lot of people, they still hold on to the past and they allow the past to really, you know, make them depressed. And, uh, and letting go of the past is, is, is part of the spiritual life. So that's really connecting with yourself and saying, you know what? Like, I'm going to forgive someone from the past that really hurt me. And I'm not going to hold that, hold that grudge anymore. Forgiving, forgiving, let, letting go from the past is going to be very, very powerful. Even, even learning, learning from the past, learning from the past and moving forward. Say, you know what? What did I learn from this? How can I grow from that? Um, morning meditation, like take some, take 15 minutes in the morning and, and really just decide how you want your day to, to, to play out. Uh, how do you want to connect with yourself? Just take some time and, and still moments. Like a lot of times we get up and we're so reactive to what's going on. Like we get up and we check our phones, we check our emails. Like we're always rushing. Take some time in the morning and just slow down and just say, hey, you know what? Like, you know, what am I grateful for? Like, what, what do I have in my life that's grateful? Because a lot of times, you know, as, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as people that want to go to the next level, we're never, we're never satisfied. Like we always want something bigger. Like we always want something bigger. And so a lot of times we have to stop and we have to say, you know what, Hey, what, what am I, what am I grateful for? Like today, like, like, uh, you know, uh, you know, Tim Grover, I, I conversated with Tim Grover. Right. And I, and I, and I was kind of curious because Tim Grover, he's worked with like uh, Michael Jordan. He's worked with uh, Kobe Bryant, LeBron. Like he's worked with some of these, these, you know, high uh, Tiger Woods, these, these real successful athletes. And I, and I just kind of asked him one day, I said, Hey, like, like, w what are you like most grateful for? And uh, he just said, Hey man, I'm, I'm just grateful to wake up. And I was like, dang, that's crazy. Because like a lot of times we, we don't even like, we take that for granted, like just waking up, you know, another thing too, I'm going to, I want to make some notes here. Cause I want to make sure I kind of get everything in. You know, this is going to be a powerful one. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself is going to be part of the, of the spiritual life. Forgive yourself uh, for mistakes that you made. Like this, you know, a lot of times we, we blame ourselves. We, we, we hold ourselves like so much tension on ourselves. We put so much pressure on ourselves. We need to forgive ourselves sometimes and just say, hey, you know what? Like I made a mistake. I need to move, move forward with that. Uh, meditation is going to be very powerful. Like, I can't go into the whole uh, science of meditation and stuff, but I definitely encourage you to look up meditation and figure out what really works for you. Uh, writing and journaling is going to be very, very important too. Like just writing down your thoughts, sharing your thoughts on paper is going to be very important uh, to get connected on a spiritual level uh, because you're just sharing your thoughts and you're just letting it go. A lot of times, uh, I know, I know one exercise, if you have like a lot of anger, a lot of stuff from when you're growing up, uh, if you're, if you're mad at people, resentment, you can actually write all, all this stuff down. And, and if you throw it away, you can actually like use that 
like throwing it away as like erasing it from your from your past like you can use those exercises uh learn to calm your mind like really learn to calm your mind one way to do that i talked about it on a on a, on a previous pod, uh webinar is to really learn how to breathe like breathe like take some deep breaths and just really breathe like fill your lungs and breathe exhale that's really going to clear your mind uh, oxygen like really getting some good air is going to really clean your clean clear your mind and you're not going to be so tense so that's very important too thinking positive is also something that 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 we often forget to do right because a lot of times we're always thinking negative or we always think like you know some fear or something so thinking positive is always going to put you in a in a, in a, in a positive state of mind uh, develop happier happier habits like uh to fig figure out what habits you can you can start to do just to put you in a happier state of mind, like really take some time to understand that. Uh, exercise your willpower. So willpower, willpower, power it will always uh, will always let you down. Like willpower is basically the best way I can explain willpower is you get up in the morning, right, and 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 you're energized, and you're like, man, you know what today. I'm going to do good today. I'm going to start my new diet. Uh, I'm going to go exercise. And like, you're, you're so motivated and your willpower is so strong, right? By, by the end of the day, uh, like you're just exhausted and you don't have, like, you don't want to, you don't want to, uh, you don't, you don't, you don't want to uh, do anything. So your willpower is real low. And whenever your willpower is real low, that's when you fall back into your bad habits the unhealthy habits so exercise your willpower means you know what if you say you're going to do something like really commit to doing it and what will happen is you'll start to build up your confidence and you'll start to understand how your willpower works i know one exercise that, that i do uh, is um for willpower is uh throughout the day like I, i'm i'm so active like i'm so i'm always running errands i'm always having meetings uh, I'm, I'm going to the gym i'm going to uh, my daughter's practice I'm, I'm always like on the go right I make it a point to always have some food available, like healthy food. Like if you look, we have a refrigerator at our office here and I make sure I put vegetables in there. I make sure that I, I have some meal prep in there. Maybe I won't eat the meal prep today, but I know there's some meal prep in there and it'll last a couple of days. So I know like whenever I'm like, wanna like call Uber Eats or, or uh, Grubhub or whatever to, to, to order some food, uh, I know I have that food there. So it keeps me eating, eating, eating lean and eating healthy versus ordering some food out. So that's some exercise you can do. Be more patient, man, be more patient. And, uh, that, that's definitely going to help you, you know, connect on a spiritual level. You know, some these are some of the things I have here. If you have any questions, do you have any questions about spiritual life? Let me say, I always think the worst. That way, if the worst doesn't happen, it's okay. Yeah, that, that, that's that, that, that's good to do. I mean, one thing you can do is it's called um, uh, risk factors. And, and risk factors is something I've learned from some very highly successful businessmen. Before they do any any kind of deal with anybody or, or pursue any kind of new venture, they always look at the risk factors. They say, what are the first, second, third, uh, even fourth consequences of, of this business decision? What are all the possible things that can go wrong? And they and they look at those things. They they weigh those out versus, you know, uh, going into a deal uh, with with not enough information or going into a project with not enough information. It's always good to look at the first, second, third, even fourth sets of consequences to any decision. So that's all, that's going to be very very helpful. Let's go next to uh, finances. So finances, well, I have job here. We'll go, we'll go to job and then we'll go to finances, right? So let's let's go to let's go from spiritual to job. So let me, let me put a number here just so we know where we're at. Let me see. Put, we'll do color red. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna move this little cursor. Oh, sorry, let me select it. Okay. 
Hmm. Okay. Let's see if I can. Okay. So we did this one. This is number one. And then we're going to go number two here. That way everybody's on this. We're going to be on number two now. So job, right? How do we, how do we, how do we improve in this area? And, and so these are the seven areas. And so, for example, if you're looking at this, if you're looking at this, you have to take inventory and you have to say, okay, uh, what, what areas have I been neglecting? Because a lot of times, like, we will we'll invest like most of our energy, like we'll, we'll invest 98% of our time into our job. And, and, and what happens is everything else gets neglected. Our family, our, our, our personal life, our physical health. Uh, if we're trying to do like a, a second business, it gets neglected. Our finances don't, don't, are not the best they can be. Our spiritual life is, is out of there. Like we're, we're all, we're all over the place, right? Like we might say, okay, you know what? Let's let, let me, commit 98% to my job. And then I'll go to church on Sundays and I'll be good here that, and I'll kind of like, you know, spend some time whenever with my family, whenever I have the free time. And so it's not a balance. And so you have to really look at these areas and say, okay, you know what, where am I at? How much time do I spend in my job? How much time do I spend in my relationships? How much time do I spend on my personal life? Like yourself, how much time do I, uh, like, I, I, do I spend on my, on my physical health? How much time do I spend on my, on my spiritual health, uh, finance, financial health, business? What, what business ventures am I pursuing that I need to invest more time in? And so let's talk about number two. So the way, like, and, and some people are the opposite. Some people, you know, maybe they, they're at the gym 98% of the time and, and they're, they're, they're meatheads, but they neglect everything else. Like I know a lot of successful bodybuilders they have you know these dudes are like cut up they're ripped you know they could probably get any chick they want but but they don't have no money because they, they neglect this or are they are they they spend eight 98 percent of the time at the gym and they want to open a a, a a fitness you know coaching business uh, fitness coaching or they want to be a, a physical trainer but they don't invest no time in their business you know or are they they're at the gym so much uh, they don't have healthy relationships, you know, are they at the gym so much? They don't have a personal life. Like they don't have an actual personal life because they commit. So it, it, it and so it, it can go either way. Like it can go, some people would invest all their, their, their time and resources in their business. And then they, 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 they neglect everything else. You know, even some business owners, they go broke, right? Because they, they, they're so focused on trying to grow the business they, they missed the financial part of it. They missed growing in these areas as well. So this, it isn't, this is not just referring to your job or, or anything. Maybe, maybe you want to be with your, your girl all day. And, you know, if she says, call in to sick to work, or I want you to spend time with me, I want to cuddle in bed all day. Uh, so you're investing too much into this. And so all these other areas are, 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 are hurting. So look, you, you got to say, okay, what, am, what is it going to be my balance here? How am I going to be able to balance this? And so let's talk about job. Let's say if you need, to, you need to get better in your job. So a couple of ways to get better in your job is really understand your employees, employer's goals. Like what are, the, what are the goals of the company that you're working for? What are they really trying to achieve? Uh, get a better understanding of what, what, you know, what your job is. What, what, are they, what they hire you to do? What are their expectations of you so that you can make sure you deliver on that? That way there's no conflict because look, the conflict happens is because the, your employer is expecting something, but you're not sure what they expect. So there's conflict there. There's a disagreement. You're not aligned. Okay. Uh, learning your boss's likes and dislikes. So, you know, it's, it's going to take some time to understand like who, who is my boss and how does he operate? Uh, what does he like? What does he di dislike? And so it's, it's, it works both ways. So you have to communicate this and say, Hey, you know, I really don't like the way you do this, you know, and I, I, I like to be treated this way. And if you treat me this way, I'll treat you that way. Let's kind of come to an agreement on that. That way you have a good work environment. Uh, show, uh, show up for your team, show up as a team player, 
you know, show up be, and, and be ready to play. Uh, these are all ways that you can improve it in your job. Like show up ready to play, show up energized, show up like ready to take action. Don't show up and, um, you know, have a bunch of excuses and, and, um, and you're dragging and, and, and they're just like, man, like, dude, you're not, you're not being a team player, you know? Uh, get to know your colleagues, get to know people you get, get to know people you, you work with uh, just so y'all can create a culture. And so like, let's say, for example, you're like, man, you know what? I, I'm working at some place, but I really don't like it there. Uh, I'm just there because the money, uh, you know, maybe you got to have a, a talk with, with the, with the boss and, and just like share, say, Hey, you know, what are we really trying to do here? I would really like to get on the same page because I'm not really that motivated with, with the work environment. I'm not really motivated with the culture we have here, but I want to know, like, I want, I want to need, I need some more information to see if this is going to be a perfect fit for me, because look, the last thing you, you want to do is you, you don't want to be somewhere where you, you're just wasting your life away. You know, you don't want to be somewhere where you're wasting your life away. If you can add value to someone else or some other company, like why not uh, seek that place out? And I think it's very important to be transparent with, with the boss and say, Hey man, like uh, I'm not really, I'm not really motivated here or I don't, I'm not really understanding the culture. What are we trying to do? I, I would like to get some clarity because I really, you know, I really want to commit to, to, to being a team player. Uh, don't, don't gossip, man. Don't be, don't gossip about the business. Uh, th these are all ways to improve your job. Uh, have a positive attitude, you know, uh, positive mental attitude. That's a, that's a good book. If you get a chance to read that book, one of, one of my really good friends, like he lives by that book, man. He says, man, this book has changed my life, man. Positive mental attitude. It's, it's a, it's a pretty powerful book. Uh, accept feedback, you know, accept feedback from, from, uh, your manager, maybe your boss say, Hey, I need you to give me some feedback on how I can improve in my job how I can be a better employee, how I can be a better team player and accept the, accept the feedback. Because a lot of times uh, we kind of live in this tunnel vision where we just see things our way. We see things our way and we don't pay attention to what else is going on. And so a lot of times the feedback is going to, it's going to, it's going to let us know in real time what things that we can change. And there, there's a difference between like, uh, someone that's giving you feedback or someone that just has like a lot of excuses or someone that's complaining or someone that's, you know, talking crap to you, you'll, you'll be able to tell the difference. Like, you know, there's people that, that will try to put you down. Uh, but there's people that will actually say, Hey man, you know what? Like, uh, can I give you some, some feedback? Or even if you ask, Hey, can you give me some feedback on, on how I can get better as a person? And, uh, and you know what, man, that's powerful because everybody, Everybody wishes they can give everybody feedback, but, but no one wants feedback. So the moment you ask for feedback, you, you become like a, you, you get in this like learner mindset, you become a, a learner and you start to observe. And because you have more information, you're able to change. And the more information that you know about yourself, the faster you're able to change because you're aware of these things. Uh, be a professional, man, whatever you're doing, be a professional. It doesn't matter if you're if you're detailing. It doesn't matter if you're selling cell phones. It doesn't matter if you're uh, working fast food. It, it doesn't matter what your position is. Always be professional. Like always be professional because look, you never really know like when your opportunity is coming. You never really know who's watching. You never really know who's who. Like there might be someone that that's um, that's not maybe he's not wearing you know a a, a ten thousand dollar suit. Maybe he's just in plain clothes, but he he identifies how professional you are in your in your in your position, and he says, "Hey, man, you know what? You're very professional. I want to give you an opportunity in coming with my company. We have a, a multi-million dollar company. I want you to be a part of it just because you show up. You're professional, and so I mean that that's an opportunity waiting to happen. So that that's some ways that you can improve in your in your job area. One thing you can do is you can actually like you can do like a a scoreboard so you can you can uh, write down all these areas and you can kind of you can kind of rate yourself on where you're at in these areas so you can say okay you know what my physical life uh i'm maybe like a two maybe in my personal life i'm a one 
to be honest with you, like I, I was like lacking in all these areas. My physical, my, my health was bad. I didn't have no personal life. Uh, my relationships suck. Uh, I, I committed a lot of time in my business. My fan, finances suck. My spiritual life, I didn't, even, I didn't even have a spiritual life. To be honest with you, this was at zero. This was zero. This was maybe like a three. This was probably like a one. This was like a, a one. This was like a one, like this, the, the business took up all my, my energy. And, and by me doing that, I neglected every, all these other areas and, and really, and really made a mess. Hold on, give me one second. Sun text me real quick. All right, we're ready to go here. So let's jump to number three. Number three. Let me know what you think so far. Give me a thumbs up if, if, uh, if you have any questions this far. And uh, if, 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 if you give me a thumbs up, I'll just keep going. Let me see number three. We're gonna be at number three right here. And so number three is finance. Okay, financial, finances, your financial position, uh, is, this is gonna be very important. So how, what are some ways that we can improve in this area? What's up Enrique? What are, what are some ways, so, let me see if I can go back here. What are what are some ways we can we can improve in our finances, right? So look, some of the ways that we can improve is we can we can find find the the what's draining our our, our money. Find what what's what the drains are, and and plug those drains. And what I mean by that is is really take an inventory of your finances. Find out you know what's what's costing you money that you're not using subscriptions. Um, just if if you waste a lot of money eating out, like you start to like look at the numbers. Like the numbers will tell you where your money's going. If it's going in the wrong places, if you're spending too much money on this, it once once you're aware of it, you'll start to learn how to make you you'll start to make changes on it. Um, you know, reduce your, if you have credit cards, you can reduce your credit card, um, interest rates, figure out how you can, you can reduce your interest rates on credit cards. It's going to, it's going to be very important. Uh, learning new things about money management is always going to be very important. Let me make a note here. But I mean, the most important thing like is really to, um, to start looking at your at your accounts, start looking at your bank accounts and say, okay, how much money did I spend this much? Because whenever we have a debit card or things on an auto draft, we don't really pay attention to it because it's it's, it's out of the way. But start start printing a statement and getting a highlighter and say, okay, you know what? I spend this much money eating out. I spend this much money here. I spend this much money here, and it adds up. It adds up. And a lot of times, I mean, one of the biggest things that you can do is like the money the the money drain the the Plug those, those drips, they're drips. So for example, like if you have a bunch of subscriptions or if you're paying for things that are, are costing, I know like for a while, like we had like Netflix, we had like uh, Amazon, like movies. Uh, I think we had like Disney. We had like all these uh, cable. Uh, we had all these subscriptions at one time. And when we started to look at it, I was like, man, like we're paying all this money for all this stuff that we don't even use. Like all these channels and stuff, we don't need all those those channels and stuff. So we really eliminate that stuff. Also, to the car insurance, we shopped around for better car insurance, and it sounds like minor stuff, but it, it makes a big difference in the long run. Uh, one thing you can also do is you can create a drip account. A drip account is um, is a savings account, and so if you get if you have auto draft, you can actually create a separate account 
where uh, whenever they deposit it, it's dripping money into that account. For example, you can drip like $50 a week into that account. And, 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 it, and what happens is the money goes into that account. You don't even see it. So just like, just like those, those uh, subscriptions are taking money from you every month, you can create the same as a savings account to, to, to create the drip. For example, if you're paying, like uh, I know Netflix, I know there's like Netflix and Hulu, right? And some people have both of those. Let's say you say, you know what? I, I just want to get Hulu or Amazon Prime, the movie, right? That's three of them. Let's say if you say, uh, let, do you have a, a question, Diego? Okay, so say, say if you have all those things, you can create, you can also create, okay, you can also create a drip account. And we have several drip accounts with our business that, that what we do is whenever those drip accounts is every, every week, there's money going to those accounts and they're drip accounts. They're small amounts, but after a while they start to build up and, and you can use those monies for other things to, to grow your business or to invest in yourself, but they're drip accounts. And so it's small amounts of money that, that, that go into these accounts and over time they build up. And that's one way to kind of get in, get in front, get in control of your finances. So look, uh, even switching banks, you know, you, you can shop around different banks, see which banks have, have better options for you. Uh, there, there's all sorts of ways, but the most important thing that we're taking away from this is you got to start to figure out what's, what's lacking in your life. Like figure out what areas that you're lacking in and start to try to balance more time in those areas. For example, if you're spending uh, 98% of your time in your job, you're neglecting your family. You're neglecting all this other stuff over here. Look, look this is the, look, he's putting $45 a day on, on, on the drip. He's dripping it. Let's go into number four, business. If y'all have any questions about the finances, let me know. If not, we'll go to number four. So number four is gonna be business. This is number four here. And so maybe you're like, well, I don't have a business right now. This is this doesn't matter to me. Well, you you are a a business. Like you are yourself is a business. So it, it doesn't matter if you're if you work for someone, like they they hired you. Think about this. They hired they hired you. They hired you, you are the CEO. You are, yeah, that's true, Doug's right. You are the CEO of yourself. So you are a business. So you have to invest in yourself. So right now what you're doing is you're investing in your business because your business is yourself because you're becoming, you're becoming more knowledgeable about what skills you need. And so by you doing that, you're improving this. So the more skills you have, the more knowledge you have, you're going to be worth more money in, in, in the workplace. You're going to be worth more money in the industry, in the world. So look, uh, these are some ways. I'm going to share some things that that kind of go, like if you have a business and some some ways if, if, you're, if you are a business yourself. So I'm going to share two things, right? Uh, know your limits. Know your limits. Know what you're good at and know what you're not good at. And, and uh, the people that have signed up, I gave you all those, those self-assessment tests. And the reason why I sent y'all those is so y'all can get an understanding of how y'all work, how your mind works, what, what's your limits? Like, what are you good at? What are you not good at? How do you use what you're good at to, to make you more money? And so what we're starting to do is we're starting to dig deeper and to say, okay, like, who are you as a person? How do you operate? How, how, do, you, how do you perform best? Because it wouldn't make sense for me to say, hey, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna start a team. And uh, and Diego, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna make you a pitcher, right? And uh, and I never I never took the time to assess your skills, but I just threw you in as a as as a pitcher, and you think, oh, well, I'm a pitcher. They made me a pitcher, right? But what if we took some time and says, hey, Diego, let's let's run some tests and let's just do some training and do some exercise to see what you're really really good at. 
and it might have come out you might be a better catcher you might you might be a better catcher than a pitcher and so by not by us not taking the time to assess to assess what we're good at we're never going to know that so all those assessment tests i sent y'all is to figure out what position y'all play best in life in your business in your family so i want y'all to be able to find y'all's position that what y'all y'all want to y'all want i want y'all to be the mvp of y'all's life be the mvp uh, of your environment because you're gonna you're gonna take these tests and you say all right i got this i know where i'm at uh another, another tip you can do is take some breaks man take a break take take a break and just take some downtime man take some downtime you know a lot of times we're, we're really hard on ourselves uh we want to go 20 i can go 24 7 i, I like to go 24 7 but I, I know that if i do i'm gonna have to pay for that later so i take breaks I make sure that I, I put that in my schedule to take a break. And, uh, and, my, and my family knows when I take breaks. So I, I make it very transparent on when I take breaks. So you wanna let everybody know, hey, this is when I'm taking a break because if they're trying to, if they're trying to get you to take a break, when it's not your break time, they're gonna say, oh, you're no fun. Like you don't wanna do this. Well, it's not that, like I, I don't, I'm not ready to take a break right now. So be transparent on your break time. And we'll get to that, how to do that in, in, a, in a bit. Take breaks. Um, Sharpen your, sharpen your selling skills. Like everything is sales. No matter if you're, if you, so think about this. A lot of times we think sales is like, man, I don't, I'm, I don't need it. I'm not going to be a salesman. I'm not going to go sell cars, but sales is bigger than that because everything is a, is a sell right now. I'm selling you to, to change your, your way of thinking. I'm changing. I'm selling you to a, hey, take some time to invest in yourself. I'm selling you because I'm saying, Hey, this is why you need to do it. These are the benefits of it. Right. So look, everything is sales. Whenever you become better sales at, at sales, you're going to be able to sell your, your services, your skills to, to someone else. You know, like Diego, right? Diego, Diego was in the, in the auto body industry, right? So if he says, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to become better at sales. So that way, whenever I'm at, 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 at my, at my, at my place of employment, I can, I can actually sell customers too if I need to. If the boss needs me to go up to the front and sell a customer on a job, I have those skills. Or I can sell myself to figure out how I can make more money. So you're always, you're always going to be selling. You're, you're either going to sell yourself, your skills to make more money, or you're going to help someone make more money. So sales is going to be very important. Uh, keep a financial score, right? A, a financial score is going to be very important, especially for men. Because men, men like competition. And so it's, 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 it's always good to have a scoreboard of where you're at financially, because if you can look at it financially, like you're going to, it's, it almost becomes a game. I remember uh, for a while, like I had a lot of debt. I had a lot of credit card debt and uh, I was in a bad spot, man. I, I was in a bad spot. Uh, this is share some, some, I'm very transparent. Uh, when I first got into business, I had like this, this crappy bookkeeper that was always like, Hey, you can, you can, um, uh, report zero. You can like save money here. You can do this. And basically she was telling me all this stupid stuff to do. And I didn't know any better. So I listened. And so three years down the road, uh, I, I was meeting with some bankers and some actual professional bookkeepers and CPAs. And they said, Hey, you know what? Your, your three years tax return, uh, are not, they, they're not good. You, you didn't show no income. So I had to go back and I had to redo my tax and I had to, I had to pay a lot of money, but you know, but what I did was I actually had like a, a spreadsheet of everything that I owed and it, and it became, it started to become a game. Like how fast can I do this? What's the strategy to pay that off? So it became fun. So it wasn't really, it wasn't really like depressing. It was more exciting because it became a game. And what happened was because I, what happened was I enjoyed playing this game so much. It, I got in the habit of just like producing, producing, producing. And before long, like I was debt free and I still had the habit of producing. So uh, keep a financial score of where you're at. Explore passive income. So explore other sources of income. So just because uh, you're, you're employed right now, there, there's no reason why you can't ex explore other ways to make passive income. And a good example of this is, uh, I don't know if I have a picture here, but uh when i first got into real estate investing man i had a like a little in my room 
it's funny, but I, I, I had a, it would, it wasn't even like a dead, it was like a stool. It was like a little, like a stepping stool. But what I would do is I would sit on the, on the side of the bed and I would use that stool almost like as a, you know, like those uh, TV, like when if you're sitting watching TV, like a bed tray where if you're sitting on the bed and you have like a tray where you can eat on, on, on the bed. Well, I had something like that, but I was sitting on the floor and I would had I had it like as a, as a desk. And what I would do is at night, I would just look up like about real estate investing and I would like read little real estate books and I would just like kind of study. And what I was doing is I was exploring uh, other passive in, uh, I was exploring passive income because I've heard about passive income, but I never really knew what it was until I started to, to read about it more. And I started to discover other ways to make passive income. And so passive income is, is, I mean, is other sources of income besides what you're doing. So real estate investing is passive income. It, and so I don't, this is my kind of thought on this. There's no su such thing as like, no, like passive income, hundred percent. Like there's no, there's no such thing as like hundred percent passive income. So if someone says, Hey, you can make hundred percent passive income. That's not true. Like everything requires some kind of work, right? For example, like they say real estate investing is, is 100% passive income, right? Well, let, let's look at it a little bit, a little bit more, right? Let's say if you owe, like if you own 100 apartment complexes, right? Okay. And let's just say you have a management, a team that manages all your, your thing and they collect your rents, right? And then you have a maintenance crew, right? Okay, fine. So now you have, you have, that's, that's, kind of passive, right? Because they're doing all that stuff for you. You're not having to collect the rent yourself. You're not having to go fix the things yourself, right? But look, let's take it a little bit step further, right? So now your all your rents come in, all your repairs are done. So now you have this income, right? So now you got to figure out, okay, I got to meet with my bookkeeper to figure out how we're going to, you know, do our taxes this year. I got to figure out how we're going to do depreciation. So you're not, you're not physically having to do the repairs, but you're still having to keep that momentum of that of that machine running. So you're not gonna, it might not take you, you know, a whole month to, to, to do the repairs and collect the money. It might take you a, a one day to meet with your accountant, your CPA, your tax advisor and say, hey, this is the strategy that we're gonna use for this year. So it, it's not it's not 100% passive, it still requires some work. It doesn't require the getting under the building that fixing commodes kind of work, but it still requires some kind of work, right? You still have to go in there and you have to tweak it. You have to make some adjustments. You might have to hire some new people. Like it still requires a little bit of work. So let's just be realistic here. So uh, another one is um, uh, track your transactions. We talked about that earlier. Uh, one thing about, about your industry or your business is stand out in your industry, be the expert in your industry. Uh, the, the moment you can become an expert or the person that, that's known in that industry, then everybody's like trying to figure out what you're doing to copy you. Then, then, then it's not so much about competing. It's about just dominating. And, um, and we see this a lot. Like for example, our, our, our shop, uh, because our shop is certified collision works. We've seen a lot of other shops. Like they, they started to put certified up and it's funny because there's shops in like within our, our kind of area. And they put that up because a lot of shop, a lot of people are trying to find our shop. And they stumble across that shop and they say, yeah, it's certified. So they try to steal some of our business. But it, what's funny is about what's funny about it is like uh, we have so many different strategies. Uh, they're trying to copy what we're doing. They don't know what they don't actually know what we're doing. So so they'll, ne they'll never know what we're doing because we're always changing our strategy. We're always uh, coming up with new ideas and we're always changing things up. So we decided to be an expert in our industry and dominate our industry and really control the market. So that's where you want to be at. Uh, another thing too, like if, if you have a business already is focus on your, on your current customers, focus on your current customers, how to improve your relationship with those current customers. That's going to make your, your business, you know, better. Uh, let me know if, this, if this, everything so far has been helpful. We got three more to go. And we're, we're running over time. So I'm going to try to make these kind of quick. We're going to go over personal life here. I'm going to try to run these kind of quick. 
Let's see, number four is going to be personal life. Personal life. Four. Five. Oh, this is five. How do we improve in our personal life? So, hey, if you have a, if you have a, maybe take a screenshot of this and, uh, and when, and when you have time, just cut, maybe give yourself a score in, in each area and figure out what, where you're at. Like take, take a little, um, test and say, okay, you know what, where am I at in my relationship? Where am I in this? Where am I at? And then you can figure out what needs to be improved. And, uh, and you'll know, like, you'll know, um, more or less like the, it's called, um, you'll know, uh, thanks, Doug. There you go. One to 10. Yeah. Let's do one to 10. If you want to do, if you do want to do like a, where you, where's your physical health at from one to 10, where's it at personal life from one to 10. And, and you can cut you, you'll start to see what areas you, you probably need to improve in. Right. And, uh, what will happen is for example, let's just say your finances is like a one or a zero. Right. And you say, man, I need to dedicate some more time to this. Then dedicate more time to it. So you get it up to a five. The, all these don't have to be tens. They, they can all be fives or they can, if you want to make them all tens, but you're not going to, you're not going to be able to get all these at 10 at one time because it, Oh, the, the, the important thing here is to, to keep, to know, to be aware of them because look like right now, I'll be honest with you. Right. So my, my, my business right now, it's, I'd say my business is an eight, right? My fan, finances is an eight. You know, my, my, my health is an eight, right? My personal life is probably like a five. My relationships is probably like a five. You know, my spiritual life is, is a five, you know? So I, I'm, I'm seeing, okay, you know what? I probably got to improve in these areas. So how do I uh, create better relationships? How do I, you know, have a better personal life? And so I'm getting better in these areas, but it, it, it takes balance work. Like it takes, I have to make sure that I'm, I'm hitting all these areas. You know, every week I'm hitting all these areas. Okay, where am I, you know? And so let's go on to number five. Number five is going to be personal life. Okay. Um, yeah. So play off your strengths. So play off your strengths and, and try not to, you know, if you're, if you're one of those guys that you try to make everybody happy. <laughs> is, is this a touch? <laughs> Hey, so, so look in your personal life, we're talking about personal life right now is uh play, play on your strengths. So focus on what you're good at, man. A lot of times, you know, we, we try to make, uh, we try to be like a yes, man. We try to say yes to everything and we try to please everybody. We try to make everybody happy. Uh, and to be honest, like, I don't think any, you're never going to make everybody happy. Like you're never going to make everybody happy. Like it, it's not possible. So a lot of times you got to focus on what makes you happy. And that, that goes back to your personal life. What makes you happy, you know? Um, and, you know, me and my wife had, had, a, had, a, had a disagreement the other day because uh, she committed to something that I didn't want to do. And I said, I'm not going to do that. Like, I, I don't want to do it. I, like, I, I'm just not. Like, it's not, it's not, it's not in, 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 the, in, the, in the path of, of where I want to go. And it's not, it, 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 I'm, I'm on a schedule here and I'm on a routine. I'm on a, I'm on a flow. And, and that's not, that's not something that I want to do. And so it created a disagreement, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, I, I shared why I didn't agree. And it was because, you know what, I, I want to focus on what I'm good at. I want to focus on what I'm good at and, and, and what, you know, I'm directed to go because I, it took me a long time to be, get on the, on this rhythm. And I don't like anything to, to ruin that rhythm. So, uh, prioritize your time, make your, make sure, make sure your time's a, a priority. One thing I can add to this is like, really put a value on your time. Like what, what is your, what is your time like worth? Like, what is your time really worth? Because look, I mean, we're not getting time back. Like we're not, we're not getting any time back. Like, so we have to be really strategic with our, with our time. And, and know, and know, okay, like I gotta be very, you know, you know, kind of guarded with my time because it's all I got. 
uh, manage your time long term. Like, so kind of just try to forecast some stuff long term. Uh, don't be so uh, reactive to things or say, you know. Yeah, we get paid to compress time. Uh, don't be so reactive and, um, you know, folk manage your term, your time long term. Like focus on, on managing your time on, for the long term play. Uh, let me see another one here is make make your workplace uh, make your workplace work for you. So make sure that your work environment works for you. Make sure that you're comfortable. Make sure that you're able to that you have the things that you need there to really feel comfortable and you're not, you know, feeling stressed out because your work environment is messy or whatever. That might be to organize your workspace, like organize your workspace so, so that you don't feel cluttered. Because that, I mean, that's that's the definition of, of chaos is, is organization, right? That's the solution to chaos is organization. Uh, oh, this is a good one right here. Like, uh, take time to make time. Ta I don't have enough time. How many people say that? I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time. Take time to make time. Like, that's going to be very important. Take some time to make the time. And that's like, that's like making a schedule. Say, hey, this is what I want to do. Uh, this is when I have the time to do that. And, and, and start working the plan. Uh, let me see, manage your mind is gonna be a good one. Manage your mind. Uh, make sure that, that you're not getting too much junk. Uh, make sure you're not getting too much junk in your mind. Uh, make sure you're not, you know, um, just consuming too much junk, man. Negative people, negative music, negative movies. Uh, just make sure you're, 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 you're managing your, your mind, because if you're trying to get too much information from too much, uh, stupid people or, you know, negative people, it's really going to affect you. Let's get into relationships. Number six is relationships. I want to thank my friend Doug for coming out here and Doug. Hey, I tell you what, Doug, I'm going to get done with physical, uh, health. And if you want to, if you want to jump on and, and add some, add something to this, hey, you're more than welcome, Diego. And if, if you have any questions, man, reach out to me. Y'all can, if y'all want to raise a hand, if y'all want to get on, y'all can ask some questions. Let me see. Uh, number, I'm going to put number six here. We're going to go into relationships. So th this, this whole thing is the, is the, is the full circle. Like, see. It's a circle. Thing works in a circle. So this this is balance right here. This is balance. It, you have to hit all these areas, and uh, and you have to constantly. It's work. I mean, it's work, man. But I tell you what, like we're working anyway. Like we're we're doing something anyway every day. Why not? Why not hit the things that matter? You know, why not hit the things that matter? If you notice on here, it doesn't have. Um, it doesn't have a uh, nightclub. It doesn't have uh, drinking with friends. It doesn't have uh, wasting time. You see, it? it doesn't have like hanging out with stupid people. You see, you see that the, have you noticed that? It doesn't have those things in here. And, but and a lot of times we have our, our circle of things that we do. We, there, there's so many random stuff in here and, and we, and we, and th these things get lost. Because look, this is, this, is how, this is how a lot of people's lives look. They have, they have a circle here, 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 here. So they have all these, these circles, right? And, and, and this is like, uh, maybe this is like drinking with the friends, this is a club. Uh, this is, um, you know, getting drunk on the weekend and sleep, sleeping late, like this is sleeping late, um, you know, video games, look at that video games here, uh, random chicks here. You can put random chicks here. Like if you, if you talk to a lot of girls, you know, time wasters, these are all time wasters. See? And so. You have all these time wasters in here and you're neglecting these because we only have so much time each day. So look, guys, like really focus on these things right here. Really focus on these things and, and, and clear up all the, all the, all the crap.
So look, relationships, number six. Number six is going to be relationships. So, hey, uh, if you if you have a, a partner, uh, one of the one of the most beneficial things that you can do, man, is, is date night and uh, consistent date night, not random date night. Plan plan a date night and uh, and really really just kind of uh, connect with your with your partner and and really just you know listen and. and um, and just observe, observe. And it's not, it's not about judging. It's not about, you know, uh, you know, telling them what, what you want to do. It's just about conversation. Have a, have a, have a decent conversation. Let, let your, your, your wife, your girlfriend talk, let them, you know, express how they feel. Let them talk about their work. Let them talk about their family. Let them talk about whatever they want to talk about is let them talk and, and really listen and understand, uh, what they're going on and that's really going to help re relationships i mean i know me and my wife like we do that and man it really helps and i have to admit like at first we would go go into uh go on date night and i was like trying to coach i was like trying to you know this is what we got to do and this is what but after a while i was like you know what like i just need to let her let her be herself and i need i just need to listen and i need to just observe and understand and not and not even she don't want to hear that, you know, like sometimes people like partners don't want to hear all the time. They want to just talk. And sometimes, sometimes we just got to just listen, uh, talk about something new, talk, bring up something new, some new ideas, uh, some new things, bring something exciting in, in child's lives, you know, and this goes back to the law of self-destruction. And so a lot of times, whenever we get into a relationship, whenever we have family, um, you know, we're so, we're so focused on like, uh, you know, I need to get a job. We need to find a place to stay. Uh, I got to raise the kids. Uh, and then, so the kids get older and yes, you have a good job. Yes. Y'all have a place to stay. Uh, yes. Y'all might be living comfortable. Y'all might have a little bit of income to, to go out and stuff. The, the kids are already growing. They're not, they're not babies anymore. And so now uh, temptation will come in because whenever you feel really comfortable, you start to seek out more adventure. You start to you start to allow uh, 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 temptations to to kind of get in get in the way. And temptations can be like you're looking at other girls, you're looking at this stuff on, on online. You're you're saying, "Man, I wonder what it's like over there. I wonder what it's like with this person." You start to you're you're, you're curious, but it's all for the wrong reasons. So you have to bring new ideas to the relationship. You got to bring new projects, new new adventures. And, and you got to make it exciting. That way y'all have something to, to look forward to, something to challenge y'all as a couple to grow forward. You know, that's going to be very important because the law of self-destruction is real. If you, if you have some time, look it up. Law of self-destruction. Uh, remember the small things, man. I mean, you know, we get so caught up in, in, in the massive things that we miss out on the small things, you know. And, and uh, some of the small things will be, you know, like this morning, I'll give you an example. Uh, this morning, like, you know, by a certain time we leave the house, by a certain time I drop my kids off, by a certain time, like we're here. Like I just, I, I, I try to have it as a routine as possible. And, um, and so today uh, I noticed like, I just say, you know, I'm gonna change it up. So I dropped my daughter off at school. And uh, so that she wouldn't be late, I called her. I, after I dropped her off, I called her, I said, hey, what kind of, what, what do you want from Starbucks? You know, I want to, I want to get you something. And I, I just remember the small things, you know, I took some time to say, you know what, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to take her a coffee. I'm going to take her some, a snack or something that she wants from Starbucks. And I'm just going to, you know, remember the small things. Cause my, my mind, once I get up in the morning, I'm like ready to go like business. I, I'm like ready to work. I'm ready to take calls. I'm ready to jump on uh, zooms. I'm ready to do webinars. I'm, I'm ready to, to go. And I had to stop and say, you know what, let me, let me just take some time and like just, get her a coffee and, or get her a, a snack or something from Starbucks and, and just let her know that, that, that I'm paying attention, let her know that I'm there. Uh, and, and like I said, like for me, I, I have a blended family. So I have my kids and I have stepkids. So I have to make sure that I'm all, it, 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 it's work. And I got to make sure that I'm committing to this relationship and I got I to gotta put some energy there because I can neglect it 
And I can say, no, nah, I'm going to focus on, on, on business and I can neglect this and I can miss out. You know, I, I can let this, this percentage right here go down. And then what happens, it, it gets too low. And then I have to invest a lot of energy in that. And then I, it, you become off balance. Then, you, then stress comes in, anxiety. Uh, know when to apologize. Know when to apologize. Sometimes we got to just say, man up and say, hey, you know what? I, I apologize for what I said. I came across like this. And uh, those are going to strengthen your relationships, right? Make time to focus on yourself. Is, is going to be very important, man. Make sure to focus on yourself. One thing that's really important with relationships is, is be clear of expectations. Like, especially if you're in a relationship, be clear of expectations. And uh, because a lot of times we, we expect uh, our partners to, to know what we want, but they don't really know what we want. And so uh, we're always trying to figure it out. And so the sooner you can make your expectations clear, then things will start to come together and it takes time. Like this is not going to happen overnight. You can't just uh, come to your partner and, and, and ask, say, this is what we're doing. Like it, 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 you're going to, you're going to, you're going to remember the fight flight are, 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 are freeze. So you're going to, you're going to create the, that into them. So you don't want to do that. We're going to go into number seven, physical health. I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure everybody here knows what this means. <laughs> And uh, if you don't, we'll, we'll, we'll go, we'll, we'll go over it. But physical health, man, is, is, is what it is. Like it, it, it is what it is, right? Uh, physical health is, is, um, is getting your ass up and, and, and getting your body moving, man. Getting your body moving, getting your blood flowing. Uh, how can, how can we, you know, phys how can we improve our physical health, right? And it's really just, just uh, you know, maintain your body weight, maintain your body weight, see what your idea of body weight is and, and work on maintaining that. Um, you know, uh, mind your metabolism. This is gonna be a good one because as we get older, your metabolism changes. So whatever you were able to eat when you were, you know, 21, 19, and, and you're getting up there in age, you're not able to eat that no more because your metabolism is changing. So know your me metabolism. Uh, build some healthy habits, uh, build some healthy habits. And, you know, that's going to be some eating health, some healthy eating habits, you know, uh, some, some little hacks you can do not to go much, not to, not to go too much into habits, but you want to start small with, with any kind of habit. So for example, if you're looking to get on healthier eating habits, uh, you can start, start small, man. Like, you know, start by, you know, say, for example, you can stop drinking sodas, right? It's all, it's all easy stuff. So you say, no, I'm going to stop drinking sodas. I'm going to drink more water. I'm going to drink more tea. That, that can be the first step into, into moving into uh, a healthier, uh, a healthier eating habit. And, and man, I used to drink a lot of Pepsis. I like Pepsis. And so what I started to do was, um, uh, what I would do is I would buy a 20 ounce of Pepsi and it'll last me a week. I'll keep it in the refrigerator. I'll take a sip and I was, I was fine. But what I started to do was I said, you know what? I'm just going to get the small can of Pepsi and I'll keep that. So and I, I'm kind of cutting down and I, I haven't had a Pepsi in a long time, you know, but you, you start smaller. So if something seems too big, just take it down a notch. Say, you know what? Uh, I'm, I drink Cokes every day. I can't go without not drinking a Coke. Well, just start by going, not drinking a Coke for just for one day and, and, and do that. Or maybe you can say, I'm not going to drink a Coke uh, for my last meal. Maybe for dinner, I'm not going to drink a Coke. I'm going to drink water. So you're just minimizing it. Or you can say, you know what? I'm going to drink a Coke for dinner, but I'm going to put a lot of ice so there's not so much Coke. So you, you, you go with what, what works for you and you start the smallest you can start to where it's like almost like it's not even that, that much of an effort. Uh, and, and you start to build that, those healthy habits in there. Same thing with the, let's say you want to eat more greens, right? Say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to eat a small salad, like a cup size salad with ranch. And so that it's the smallest thing and it's not even going to affect you versus you trying to eat a whole salad for a meal. Like I can't, I can't eat a whole salad for a meal. Drive me crazy. You have to have some chicken in there or something, but Hey guys, those, those are some of the things that we can do. Those are the seven areas, man. I'm glad y'all stayed with us for the four, four week thing. Big shout out to everybody that signed up and got all the, 
uh, big shout out to everybody that signed up for for the for the set the four week. I'm gonna continue it uh, for next week for anybody that neither one signed up, but everybody that signed up got the assessment. Uh, they're able to get on on the on the they're, they're able to schedule a call uh, with me to go. I know I know I've been on the call with uh, Diego several times now. Enrique, if you want to get on the call, man, just reach out to me. We'll jump on a call. And we'll talk about everything that you're that you're that's going through and 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 some transformation that you've made and how I can help. I see what Doug has a question here. Oh, this is uh, Diego. I need to ask you about the way of real estate that Diego, can I can I bring you can I uh, unmute you? Let me see. Hey Diego, can I can I I'm gonna unmute you, Diego, if you want if you want to get on. How did I do this? Let me see. Yeah, let, let, let's see. Let me see if I can bring you on, Diego. Let me see. As to me, okay. Hey Diego, try to unmute yourself. You see, I can hear you here. Hey. Hey, can you hear me? All right, perfect. What's going on? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Go for it, brother. What's your um, question? Well, well, it's kind of like, you know, um, I guess not relevant in the way of what like you're talking about but like it was just um wanted to see if um i don't know i was in a in a webinar the other day and it was pretty much um explaining and how you can get paid and um on like uh foreclosure homes okay after their their um uh, after it's been you know on a tax sale that they're sold that um that the owner still has money in it and um, he has time, you know, different states are differently uh, or work differently, but um, you know, usually about like three years that you can claim your money back and pretty much they give you like a, um, a finder's fee for it. And um, you know, on people that have um, lost their homes, you can get them the money back, you know, some money, Mm -hmm. in it and then you can make some money too as a a, a finder's fee oh, I by doing it yeah like like if uh yeah i know what you're saying because like if uh so basically like if, if their house gets foreclosed the bank sells it right and so yeah. the so the bank's only the, the the bank's only able to sell it for what they what they what they were owed so for example if the house is worth a hundred thousand right and, yeah. and, and the bank uh, bank sells it for 50 because that's what they're owed. There, there's still some equity that that they should go back to the, the original owner. Am I right? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't really know too much detail about how that strategy works. Um, I, 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 it's, it's almost like wholesaling, I think, like I was never really interested in wholesaling because it's not really it's not really real estate investing. It's more of a, a one-time transaction. You know what I'm right. saying by that? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's only a one-time transaction. You might. Uh, are, they, are they looking for you to get into that or they just want to, they just want to try to find properties? Yeah, they are wanting me to get into that. You know, uh, they are trying to, you know, recruit some people mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, uh, you pay an amount and they give you like um <clears throat> contracts um you know like um a lot of ways to help you mm -hmm. succeed into doing that you know find the people that you know the properties that have this you know um tips on how to talk to them 
what to say, what not to say, um, you know, just stuff like that to help you achieve pretty much that goal and, you know, pretty much like a win-win, you know, you're helping them and you're, and you're getting rewarded, mm -hmm. you know, at the same time, you know, and um, I wrote some notes down on it, um, you know, um, pretty much uh, you have to get it before it, it uh, what was that word, a cheat, S cheat, something like that. Escrows? No, S cheats, I think. And that's, you know, that's pretty much uh, like uh, that's before the government um, gets it, you know, because you have a little window that you can claim that money. But after that window closes, then, you know, that the government, the government gets to claim it's that gone. money. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I, I really don't know much about that, that, that process. Uh, my my thing, because I, I was introduced to like wholesaling, uh -huh. and the thing with wholesaling is, is there's a lot of crooked people out there doing that, that stuff. The wholesaling, yeah. And uh, I just I, I just didn't have the time and energy to kind of be playing games and not really know who I can trust and who I couldn't trust. And so i i i wanted to get in real estate i wanted to get some real estate investment property i didn't want to just do transactions well see um i was kind of looking at this as in getting some money and then being able to invest in real estate yeah you yeah you know because yeah. um, from what they were saying man you can you know uh anywhere from like seven ten twenty thousand dollars per deal you know Mm -hmm. The owner gets, you know, would get like a, you know, a eighty thousand out of it, and you'll get, you know, a ten thousand or, you know, you know, different houses. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Percentage of, you know, the total amount. Yeah. Um, you know, right. you can charge up to thirty, thirty to forty percent is what they were talking about. You know, and you know, I, I was looking at it, and it seemed, you know, pretty interesting. You know, mm -hmm. and to get money and build up your you know, build up your money to be able to invest. Yeah, you're right. You're right. What, what you can, what you can do is you can just try to ask more questions and, and you can say, okay, like, uh, who, who have y'all trained that's doing this already? That's successful. Cause, cause the numbers won't lie. Right. If, uh -huh. if you, if you can figure out who's doing that and like who's successful at doing that. And, and I actually see it, they'll give you some real numbers uh then it then it might be something you might want to pursue and you might want to ask okay uh who's doing this and and who has like a track record that i can actually like see for myself and how much time did they did they invest in, in to get into this point you know what i'm saying uh -huh. like for example like if i say yeah diego uh you can open a shop just like me and and i, I can make it look easy but if you say, "Hey, Stan, how long did it take you to actually do it?" Like, show me, show me the 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 the, the track record. It it took me ten years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it take it take it. There's a process to get to a certain level. So, you you always want to ask more questions. Okay, like who's doing it? Uh, do you have someone that I that I can talk to that's doing it right now? That can actually tell me how much time they invested in this? How much time did they invest to to find leads? Uh, to find the properties. Cause I know, I know a wholesaler that like, like that's his job, dude. Like, like he gets up in the morning and like, he's, he's just trying to find properties all day. Like that's his job. And, and the only ways he's, he's able to succeed at that is because like he gives it, like he's doing that like 10 hours a day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to find deals. Yeah. But, but he's like a, he's a, a wholesaler. Uh, but like, if they say what well, it can be done, you know, part time when you're, you know, when you're asleep or at night, you, you might want to ask more questions. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's always good to ask a lot of questions. Even if you, if, if you think it's a dumb question, it doesn't matter. Just ask the question. It's better to ask a dumb question to, to, to spend, you know, some money and a couple of, uh, a year realizing that, Hey man, this is not what I wanted to do after all, you know? Yeah. You know, so, so ask, ask some good questions, but I'm glad, I'm glad y'all, y'all stayed for the whole week, the four week on this, on this thing, man. 
Yeah, I'm glad too, and I really learned a lot. Awesome, man. Awesome. We're gonna we're gonna continue uh, doing it, and uh, and definitely when you get that that other book, we can we can make we can set up a call. We can go over that book, and uh, we'll definitely start to pinpoint. Do Do you see how they, these seven areas they they really make a lot of sense in our lives? Yeah. Yeah. So they're the most that impact you for sure. Yeah. And, and a lot of times we just focus on on our job. And, and our family, right? Because that, whenever they say balance, how do you balance, you know, work and, and family? But it, it's, it's, it's deeper than that. It, it's really deeper than that. But, but y'all have any more questions, Diego? No, I think All I'm right, good. All right, brother, man. Uh, let me know if you need anything. You have my information. Uh, big shout out to my man, Doug, and Rick is here too. And uh, I'll see y'all next week, brother. All righty. All right. I'm going to put the replay on, on YouTube if y'all want to go back and watch this. Okay. All right. Later, man. Later. All right.